Hi guys, my name is Ali. Welcome to Christ with Coffee on Ice. <laughs> and I'm Ice Cream. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Christ with Coffee on Ice Cream. That'd be great. Ice Cream. Wait, I love no, this no. that you guys are going to be interviewed where you guys are. Yeah. Well, not interviewed, fun. but like, you know, yeah, y'all are like, yeah. this, this is just giving, we're just besties talking about Jesus. Thank I God. love it. Everyone say Jesus saves. One, two, three. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> you got me out here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Christ with Coffee on Ice. I am your host, Ali Yost. And if you are physically watching, you can tell we are in a very different environment. We are not <laughs> sitting on my orange couch in my house. We are sitting in Los Angeles, California, and we are sitting with Girls Gone Viable. <laughs> we have Ari and Ange here, and also bestie Ashley Hetherington, who you guys are very familiar with. She's already been on the podcast. But I am so excited, guys. I'm so excited. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Ari, yes, so much. I'm just so Wait, happy to be this here. This is truly. incredible because the like the way okay i have to admit there have been a couple times where i've been on tiktok and y'all obviously come up on my like comment section all the time where they're like you need to get together with girls gone bible like i mean obviously we're together all the time so that people see that but they're like this needs to happen and i've been biting my tongue because obviously we we knew that this was gonna happen and so uh the last couple times that i've been live i've just been like okay you know, and then they freak, they're in all caps, y'all. They're freaking out. They're like, wait, that's confirmation. Like, they're, this is like, this is exciting. Like, that everyone, is actually so cute. I'm so excited that you guys are here right now. So thank you so much. Thank you for just like, I don't know. I'm just so stoked. Thank like, this you. is awesome. The girls are so geeking. Praise the Lord. No, they're freaking out. I can feel it. Like, we're freaking out right now. I love right you now. guys and you I guys. love you guys. Praise the Lord. We're so grateful. But yeah, I just love y'all so much. I just want to talk about Jesus together. And yeah. also, like, I know that, I mean, this friendship's still really new. Like, we've really only been connected for a couple months. Yeah. So I think this is a great opportunity to obviously, like, get to know y'all more. And I want to hear more about, like, how you guys found the Lord. Also, like... I want to hear about how Girls Gone Bible started, right? Yeah. If you guys aren't familiar no, with Girls Gone Bible, I don't know how that's possible. Mm -hmm. Their podcast is absolutely blowing up. Y'all haven't even been doing it for a year, right? No. Like what, like eight months? Uh, since May. May 16th was our first episode, so it's like eight months. That's yeah, amazing. So, I, yeah, I just want to hear all of it. Like just so the, the listeners who maybe don't know you guys can get to know you more and just like who you are, where you've come from. What is Girls Gone Bible? Please and thank you. Love you. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> first, I just want to say, God, I love these girls so much. <laughs> Ashley, Ali, we are so I mean, we told our whole little meeting story on because they were also on our podcast. So yes. I don't know whose is going to come out first, but we also didn't episode where we heard both of your testimonies and that was so good and it's gonna be I mean that was probably one of my favorite episodes with a guest ever you guys wow. you guys know Jesus you know mm. him you can tell when somebody knows Jesus you can tell when somebody's been with Jesus like it says in scripture so we just love you guys so much you guys really come from the heart it's beautiful. We oh love God. you guys so I much. See Jesus <laughs> I love this eyes. table so it's much. Beautiful. I'm telling you, when we first wow. met, when I first met you guys at Passion, I literally, there were so many people there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I, them, I, I want to be, I yes. had never met you guys. Yeah. And you I ran right up to me. Wait, talk about the vision that you had about the, the vest. No, that was Which is wow. so funny because I was, look at you, I love you. No, I'm crying. You I love you. Passion too? I'm crying. Yeah, she was. Here. Stop. Yeah, Ari goes, why are you crying? Can we get a one tear? No. It'll <laughs> come. Let it, let it happen. Don't we worry. love you, Ashley Hetherington. Oh, I just love I, you. It's just God. He's like, so he good. Is so, mm, he's at this table. He We're going to have a great time together. Thank all you, of Jesus. us. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I love him so much. I So the morning of passion, it was so funny because I <laughs> felt like I had been – you know, you guys, you can ask God for anything, visions, dreams, words from him, and, and he might give them to you, he might not. I ask for dreams and visions all the time. I, I beg him for dreams, and he just, that's just not really my thing. That's not really something that he's given me as of now. But I had been asking him for visions for a, for a while, being like, God, just let me see things before they happen. And so I have confirmation that it was from you and that, like, you're speaking to me in that way. And... This is going to sound so small, so minuscule, and so random. But that's like how he works, though. It is. So that morning of passion, I was seeing... I had seen multiple things in the morning that I then later had the exact conversation with people that I saw in the morning as I was getting ready. There clearly is a reason why God wanted to meet me that day, that weekend. Maybe it's because I was so, I mean, my intention was literally just on Jesus. I was at, at a conference. And that morning, I knew that you were at Passion because I saw that you were there on yeah. social media. I had never, I, I didn't see what you were wearing that day or anything. <laughs> 
but I knew that Ali has this same jean Aritzia. vest from Maritzia Re- as me. Vest, yeah. Yeah, it's just a jean we just, vest. Everyone wears it. It's so it's, cute. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I had seen you wear it one time on social media, and I had I was wearing it that day, and I literally was putting on makeup, being like, I'm going to see Ali. I had a vision of us seeing each other, and she would be wearing that vest, and I would be wearing mine, and we would be like, this is so crazy that we're both wearing the vest. I swear. Like, and you probably were like, wouldn't that be funny, God? LOL. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it wasn't even like, it's not like God's giving me this prophetic word for my life or yeah. anything. <laughs> He's like, she's going to wear a yeah, denim so vest. She's going like, to wear that Aritzia vest, or are you? So yeah. random. <laughs> when I was at Passion, and I saw my girl wearing that vest, and she came into the suite that I was in, I literally go, I Jesus. don't know what it means, but I just it, it all it, it didn't even mean need to mean anything. All it meant was that God was speaking to me, regardless yeah. of how big or small or insignificant it might have been. And I immediately ran up to her and I was like, "This is gonna sound so weird. I'm not claiming to be a prophet, but I knew you were gonna wear this." One hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like not a lot of words were really even said in that moment. We just went ah, and we just so hugged true. each other. It, it was is. just like it was just like we both were feeling like like that was so highly anticipated like yeah. us running into each other like that and we like already kind of talked about this on y'all's episode that we just filmed but there was like so much doubt in that too which I think is so real in just like the world of women like there's just yeah. like this weird and I think that that's how the enemy really loves to attack us specifically like women in our community is like that weird kind of like catty defensive like competitive like I don't like we don't even mean to do it but I feel like it's just like you just have these seeds of doubt like that person's gonna be like not gonna like you or there's like that weird competitive not that I had any of that in my heart but you have that doubt like when it comes to other women and it almost like for a little bit it was working where we we really didn't say anything to each other because we were literally sitting with the same exact thought yeah at the same time you know of like well I don't know I don't really want to she looks like she's great and doesn't need to know me. Like, I don't know, just stupid things. Yeah. And so I'm just so grateful that we just, you, you did though. You were like, I'm breaking this off in the name of Jesus. I'm going up to her and hugging her. And like, praise the Lord for that obedience because. Yeah, yeah you it, really did. You did. You, you said, up. I'm done. Like, I'm going up to her. I loved your boldness. It was bold. It's yeah. just because it's so real. It's so real that especially as women, you can be so scared to just so approach somebody So scared of other girls. As a friend. Yeah, and like me and Ari are very much like, we will truly go up to anyone ever verb and because we know but we know that we know that there's got to be one person in the equation that will go step out in faith and be like there has to be this friend might not want to be my friend but I'm gonna try anyways but there was something weird that like I mm. wanted to talk to you you mm. wanted to talk to me but it both so of us and I'm not even like that I'll go no, up to a, the mailman to talk yeah. to him yeah. and so it was weird and so that's why when you guys were in the suite I was like no I'm I, I don't even not an feel accident. comfortable and you guys were mm. in a group of girls anyways and that mm. was intimidating in and of itself Cause it's just mm. like, what if they don't want to talk to me right now? I don't so know. Silly, so I just stupid. went up and I was so like, so enemy coded. Just yeah. him being a freaking jerk. Loser. Weenie. I can't. He's, I want. I was gonna say weenie, and then bit. I said yeah. jerk. The listeners know he's a freaking she says weenie. weenie. And I'm starting. I'm the Lord is that a, now. <laughs> yeah. The Lord is is the best, but the enemy is a weenie. He's a freaking weenie. He's, he's a, a weirdo. weirdo. But I'm weirdo! so glad. He's a weirdo. <laughs> he's a weirdo. But he <laughs> wants division, y'all. He wants division. Yeah, yeah, and so like he he, those little seeds that he was trying to do mm. was giving division. And so Especially like with two, this you know, unity is just so powerful. To have that, yeah. that, you know, and just to have this peace and unity. And of not all only of that, here. but like friendship. It's yeah. just yeah. so sweet. Like mm. God is unifying yeah. the body. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so cool slay. I will, slay. and nothing can stop him by the way so that's how we're all sitting here right now yeah. so praise Jesus that he's stronger than any seed of doubt that the enemy could plant in our heads or, or anywhere you absolutely know? and also just like always assume I think something that we try to live by for sure is that we're like always just assume the best of people until they give you a reason not to like people are truly innocent until proven guilty in our mind and that's not to say I that, that. We, it's not to say that we're naive because we're not we have very strong discernment we ask mm. for discernment all the time but at the same time it's just like I'm not gonna live in fear my whole life thinking that people aren't gonna like especially me. because it hasn't when, happened exactly it and hasn't happened the rejection right. didn't happen she didn't actually tell me she didn't want to be my friend so yeah. why are you living in a reality that actually 
doesn't exist. No, just assume the best. Assume that people, assume everybody likes you. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And right. a lot of people are hurting. Like, yeah. a lot of people won't approach you because they're going through something. Because they're, yeah, they're going yeah. through stuff too. Yeah, you so know? you going up to that person could be a blessing to them. And exactly. it most likely is. And it's like, it's kind of like mm-hmm. what we were even saying, you know, in y'all's episode. Ashley, you had said when you commit to something and you have that feeling to not do it, like, mm-hmm you're really robbing yourself of that moment Mm -hmm. that the Lord was gonna bless, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he needs you there. And I feel like even when it comes to things like that too, where it's like you want to have these friendships or maybe you wanna approach a person or you wanna like, you know, whatever that you feel planted on your heart, but if you reject it, you're robbing not only yourself, but like you just said, Ari, like you could be robbing that person from a serious blessing that day. Yeah. Yeah. That may- maybe they needed somebody to mm-hmm. see them for the first time and approach them because no one ever has, you yeah. know? That's that's one of the great things though, about going through the hard times is you are so desperate and mm-hmm. hungry mm-hmm. for people and community. Yeah. And I just remember going through those dark times. And, and you know you- the feelings, you have so much empathy and compassion for that. Yeah, you know? and you can get so complacent in your own friendships but when you go through those hard times like when I had met her I was so vulnerable yeah. I just bled everything out to her right away and mm-hmm. that's what made us so close yeah. it's that vulnerability when yeah. you're in the hard times yeah I, I love I that I like want to hear their friendship story so I'm not that's perfect here, but like I want to hear I it. that's <laughs> some perfect transition I <laughs> yeah. want to hear about that like tell yeah. me about the beginning of y'all's relationship and yes. all of it please yeah uh, it's a, like the I love favorites. y'all. It's it's. I the, love the way that y'all just look at each other with so much love. Like, we are love you joking? Each other so much. I love I you love guys her so much. It was November 9th on my birthday, mm-hmm. and I was in some deep, deep pain. Yeah. And we were at a modeling job, and I had went into the corner of the room because we were getting our makeup done, and I couldn't get through it. They had to redo it a couple times, and so I went in the corner, and I was just. What does that mean? Were you crying? Well, yeah, yeah, I was like, I was just, I was so broken mm-hmm. at this time. It was my birthday. It was the first year that mm-hmm. I had, was without the partner that I was with. Mm-hmm. And I was in a really, really dark time. And so I was in the corner and I was really ashamed and I was really embarrassed. And I was just like crying in my hands. And I'm just like, please, please, God help me right now. Like I am, I'm so sad. How am I going to get through this day? And as I'm crying and I'm praying, I feel somebody's hand take mine. And I I looked over and it was Angela and she was holding my hand. And you'd never met her before. I'd never met her. This is wild. And she looked at me and she said, she said these words that I always had said since I was a kid that is so comforting. Mm. And it was, I don't know who you are, but we're gonna get through it together. (laughs) And she sat with me and she hugged me and she didn't judge me and she just sat there with me for about 30 minutes and I had to double take her because I truly a couple months prior to that I was in an isolation season yeah I had my friends but they thought I had lost my mind basically because I had had this moment of finding God Mm. and I was so desperate for a godly Christian friend because no one was understanding this revelation that I had right and so I wasn't really connecting with anyone in the church. And I, uh, the one prayer that I kept saying was, God, please bring me a godly friend, but someone who's been through some stuff like me, someone right. I can relate to, someone who just understands mm-hmm. this pain and, and what I had been going through with my family and the breakup and everything. And so when I met her, you couldn't have brought me. If I ever mm-hmm. doubt God, mm-hmm. I look at her and I'm just like, <laughs> he... He provided for me at the exact time that I needed. And not only that, but when I had found God, I still hadn't read the Bible. Yeah. And so I was still very much broken. And I'll never forget driving with her in the car. And I was just like so dead inside. And I looked at her and I said, Angela, I don't know if I can do this. Mm -hmm. Should I get on some medication? And she looked at me and she said, give me a month. I'll introduce you to the Bible. Wow. She is truly my my angel in human form. Yeah. She never judged me. She sat there every single day with compassion. Every morning, she slept over every single day. She was right there with me. She spoon-fed me the wow. Bible, and that's what changed my life. Yeah. The Word of God. Yeah. And she just, every single morning, and I was confused. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I had yeah. never even opened it. Yeah. And, and, it, and every single morning, she just word by word explained everything Mm. to me and was so gracious and so kind and she stuck by me through every little thing Mm -hmm. with compassion and love 
Yeah, you're just the I'm so blessing. proud of you because mm. you truly walked just as Jesus would have. Like, like everything that you're saying, Ari, is just like, that is exactly how Jesus would have yeah. looked at Ari in that moment. So, like, truly, praise God for just, dude, you are so <laughs> obedient to the Lord. It's so admirable the way that you just, like, we're like, you know what? We're going to do this together. That is that. what Jesus would do, and that's literally what he calls us to do for one another. You know what made me love her so much is that there are many things that people would have been like, I can't handle this. Yeah. And I would, like, say things to her, and she'd be like... All right. Well, here we <laughs> no, go. No, that's Let's why the it. Lord was like, this is going to work. And that's why I just quad. knew. Yeah. I was like, this <laughs> like, is my really? girl. And she had just yeah. known me for two weeks. And I'm just, ble- and she just was like, all right, here I we go. I can handle Let's it. I'm here. together. Yeah, that's We did so everything good. together. Every so single good. thing. Well, the, the most beautiful part of all that, I love you so much. Thank you for the kind words. <laughs> and, and it was... It has been the joy of my life to do that with you. And by the way, I was also spoon fed the Bible. So if I could ask, if I could pray for every person on the planet is that they have somebody to spoon feed them the Bible. Because it changes your life to like truly be discipled by somebody and have somebody walking hand in hand Mm. with you in your journey with Jesus. But when Ari and I met, like I literally loved the girl. I can't tell you, she was in her mind in like the worst time of her life. She was instantly my favorite person in the world. (laughs) We laughed like it was nobody's business. And that's something that she and I have always shared is like, we go through pain. We're so close to Jesus. We walk hand in hand with Jesus, but we are not exempt from pain. We're not yes. exempt from going through hard situations, but we have joy mm-hmm. and we hold on to that joy for dear life. Yeah. So when we first met, I was like, I love this girl. Like she's so funny. She's so mm-hmm. sweet. She's so vulnerable. Cause it, like, sure you can say all day, like I helped her, but like Ari helped herself. Mm-hmm. Do you know what it is? I'm sure you guys know if you, if you're a believer and like you really follow Jesus, all you want to do is introduce people to Jesus so yes. when you have somebody who is actually so willing like they want do, to know oh we're running do you understand what I've seen in this girl's life it's been the most encouraging thing for me to see within months her whole life changed I had already been walking Jesus for like three two three years reading the Bible and she there were things that I was holding on to being like no I, I love Jesus but I'm not gonna give mm-hmm. this up and yes. I'm gonna hang on to this mm-hmm. and literally within it was convicting a, for you are you do you understand that most of my transformation came because this girl is sitting there being like wow. a month and being like, yeah, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm like, <laughs> you're like, whoa, I've been well, here, here for a while. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do it either, That's I guess. Yeah. Wow. Seriously. It was, See, and he knew the way that you guys would like help each other. It wasn't yes. just like Angie oh, he, spoon feeding not. Ari. It was like Ari also low-key ministering to you too. And saying, God, I just want you, nothing else. Yeah. And how that, you know, ministered so to people yeah. around you. We really held each other accountable. And that's we why do. it's so important important to have a good godly friend because yeah. you really hold each other accountable like, yeah. but that you trust to tell everything to mm-hmm. and that means even the dirtiest nastiest like dark yes. thoughts and things like mm. there's not a single thing that we keep from each other and we f- from the very beginning we're both like from the east coast we're both straight shooters like yeah, we, really you know we don't really like we don't play those games like you, you, i'm gonna Where say what i'm thinking I, so i grew up i lived in new york when i was a kid and then i grew up in connecticut and then i went to high school in right. florida right um, but my family is also Albanian, so we're Eastern European. So nobody yes. lies. Like mm. it's very much like you tell the truth. <laughs> it yeah. is. If yeah. I don't like what you're doing, I have literally no problem telling you, and I don't care if you get mad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I love you so much that I'm not gonna let you keep mm. doing that. Like beat around the bush. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. like there's Never. not in a mean way. No, no, like, not yeah. in a mean no, way. I'm but not saying no. that it came off that way. But it's like I feel like sometimes people get that twisted where they're like, Nah, I'm gonna tell you that you are this, and it's like, okay, oh, we no, no, no. love though. You <laughs> know, yeah, like let's not take it too far. That's why you, I, that's why, what do you guys think about this? I think it's important to have friends of all walks of life, absolutely. But then there's also something about having a friend who's had a similar life experience to you yes. that you can actually understand each other. Mm-hmm. Because the reason why we're so open is because there's no way she can judge me because she's been in the same position. Like, I know, you know your I, dirty laundry, like, you yeah. don't mind. And it's so like there's the just same. No yep. judgment, just yeah. just refinement and mm-hmm. encouragement and edification of being like, no, this uh, you're better than this, yeah. I'm better than this. Yeah. We love Jesus and we don't want to hurt him. Yeah. yeah. So after we became friends, we spent, so I was going through a breakup at the time as well. So at the time we were, it was just so. Giving common denominator. It's like, we're both brokenhearted, great. Let's go through I, this yeah. together. And I literally, I stayed at her 
house every single day for a month. We watched the cho- so before she yes. even started reading the Bible, we watched the chosen together. And like she started to understand who Jesus was through the chosen and I was and we were just every single night chosen, go to sleep, then we wake up and we read the Bible. Ari, I feel like the beginning of your story is so like mine too cuz like literally the chosen did the same thing for yes. me because I was so new to the Bible that watching the chosen I was like Wait, that's Matthew seventeen twenty one. No, you like, know, you know, didn't it help you though? It so did. I feel like it, <laughs> it did. I'm I love it. I'm glad yeah. you just said that. I I forgot about that because yeah. that made me want to read the Bible, especially when I absolutely watched Mary Magdalene. I was like, open the Bible now. I, I want to get mm-hmm. now. I want to really read it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it helps you that's because so I'm a sweet. visual person. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the reasons why we got along so well, too, Ari was not familiar with, like, big prayers. Like, I can be mm. a little bit, like, almost charismatic in my approach. Like, I'm just very much, Ooh, like, I love spirit your prayers, driven. They are, Thank they you. She follows the spirit. They are, yeah. You, follow, you just let the Lord take it. No, but I, they're, like, they're, like, I don't know it's how to explain fire. it. It's a fire. It's a fire. It's like every weapon you could think of in the album. <laughs> she, she hits bombs. It's all no, she hits it. all she fronts. So <laughs> the way Jesus. you pray is like supernatural. No, for real. It is so powerful. <laughs> so, so you as well. Oh, both of them. Allie yeah. literally dropped a bomb this morning. Yeah, I said in the name in of prayer. Jesus, not today. No, okay, I interrupted you. No, no, no. No, I, 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 we had a moment in the car. So very early on, Ari was just so receptive to like being spirit led, being touched by the Holy Spirit. She was hungry for it. I'd be like, one of the first times we hung out, I was like, do you mind if I put my hands on your head and pray for you? And I'm like, <laughs> we're, I'm doing like, I was desperate. I was like, you're like, and push your hands on my head, girl. Put your hands and, she, and, and, hands on my and I'm, I'm like, I am praying my heart out with this girl, yeah. and she's just so receptive, and she's just here with open arms, mm-hmm. and that's why God moved in her life the way that she, she was did. willing she wow. was so humble yeah. so willing so you, obedient humble. and we had a moment where this is the best thing of my life I'll never forget this it was like a moment of true surrender that I saw in Ari was we would always do this thing and we still do it where one of us will be in the shower the other one sits on the ground so that we can still talk <laughs> and so <laughs> We're just, the, we don't leave each other side. yeah I'm so, obsessed so she was in the shower right and she's like sitting in the sh- shower and she's like she's she's struggling and and we're kind of like going through similar stuff and i'm sitting outside and she's like she's just it just total surrender she goes Ange, i'm like what's up she goes do you think that jesus will heal me the way he healed mary magdalene because we had just watched the chosen she found you know she discovered mary magdalene and i was like i was like just ask him and she goes out loud for the first time i hear really pray she goes jesus i welcome you to heal me the way you did mary magdalene and (laughs) i know i'll never forget it and he did he did he literally started to heal my friend the same way he healed me i struggled with my mental health when i found jesus really badly i was not okay i struggled with alcoholism with panic attacks with intrusive thoughts with so many things and he started to heal me from the inside out he delivered me from alcoholism i didn't go to aa i didn't have a sponsor (laughs) nothing my guy delivered me i healed from panic attacks i'd never been to a day of therapy I just prayed I realized who Jesus was what he did why he died yeah. and I realized that I have authority through Jesus to trample over serpents and scorpions Thank and Jesus, however yeah. that verse goes and literally <laughs> and and then I watched her do the same thing that I did and it was just it, like it's I, so rewarding to just be a part of it oh are it's you like, kidding are you me kidding? I get to just watch God do this through a person that I love so much yeah no I was just like watching on the chosen Mary Magdalene and I'll never forget it because I was so new to all this yeah and I'm watching her mind be tortured yeah by just evil spirits and and I just remember her hands on her head and she's just she's being tortured she can't couldn't get out of it and I've never related to some, someone so much mm-hmm. I was tortured yeah I never thought I was gonna see the light at the end of the tunnel I never thought I was gonna get better I thought from what I had to watch growing up, this is only gonna get worse. Yeah. And I was scared. I'm so sorry, Ari. That's I awful. was scared. Yeah. And when I saw Jesus look at her in that moment and say, You are mine, and he took her in his arms and he held her and she was healed. I had such a like a moment of being like He's going to do that with me, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Stop it right now. He you know? loves you just as because much. Because <laughs> I, I, I just, I, one of the prayers that I always said was, 
and 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 I always I, I always say this on the podcast. It's okay to take medicine. God made it because sometimes people need it. I was someone who wanted to heal in a different way. I mm. knew that I could. I I just I wanted mm. to. I just knew I needed to heal in a different way. I knew it, mm. and so. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe he healed me in such a way. Yeah. That's why I'm so relentless, and I just want to bring people every day. I will spend the rest of my life doing this Thank because you, people are broken, yeah. and and the power of Jesus is just yeah, it, it's it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's yeah, and I think that like like mental, just all of it, like anxiety, yeah, depression, like it is so alive in our generation millennials and gen z like these young kids yeah. like are struggling so much with their mental yeah and they just have to live in it every day yeah and it's so heartbreaking because it's like when you're in your own head it's hell on earth it's literally hell what on earth said, and you know what it is i was someone who comes from a bloodline of mental health like yeah. and sometimes that happens you you you're just born with you some people have to work harder for their yeah. mental health because yeah. you know you have a parent or something that suffers and so you watch that growing up and you think how how am i going to be okay if i have yeah. to watch them my whole life struggle right yeah but that's why i am the way i am because it doesn't matter what you grew up in mm. it doesn't matter yes, how right. much you struggled yes. or if you think you can't get out of it oh yes you can thank because you, if i could get out of it yes. let me tell you you can too thank you, and jesus. i promise that is my promise to you if you seek jesus and you that is the beautiful thing about surrender it's that intimacy yeah. and just coming to him raw and, and, and being on your knees and saying i need you i am struggling i yeah. am hurting i am broken yeah. my mind won't stop yeah. there's Come something on. in that yeah. when he comes in and he wraps your uh, his arms around you mm. and he takes you in his arms and he's there and he will heal you yes. and he will you walk will. beside you through it yes. and it's 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 miraculous and uh, and i know that every single person watching this will experience that i'm yeah, not saying will. might yes you will you will yes done healing Thank you so much healing Ari. oh my is, gosh is accessible to for everybody. everyone it is yours to receive yes the healing we say it all the time and that's why our ministry and our podcast and everything that we do is so geared towards healing is because one we experienced that in our own lives that he it's literally real went, you've seen it he went into our brains like a brain surgeon and healed us from years long trauma from mm. he things that we've struggled with our whole lives he mm. took out not saying that it's been easy it's an uphill battle and guess what i take one day away from the word and and one day is come enough on. for things to start come on. Keep creeping back. It's not a one and done situation. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a lifelong pursuit of Jesus yes. that will keep that Every healing day. in your life. Exactly. Yeah. But like the miracles <clears throat> that Jesus and his disciples did in the Bible, in the book of Acts, we can do that today. It happens today. The yes. deliverance. Still. Deliverance, deliverance is real. The healing, like everything that we read in the come Bible, on. the way that like people struggled people struggled with mental illness like we have always struggled with these things demonic oppression it's yeah. always been a thing yeah. they've been around since all you of think, it you think if someone you have a voice in your head telling you to whatever yourself okay mm -hmm. you think that's just a random thought that you're that having? is a demonic that is a spirit that is Demonic that, you know, and that that's, is a that, we're, that's spirit. that we need deliverance over. Yeah. Period. It's yeah. a spirit. Well, and I think what the enemy likes to do, though, too, is that, see, guys, this is so wild because Ooh. I feel like I always, like, we always talk about demons on my podcast. Yeah, we, maybe talking it's about the dark though. all the time, but it is. But he likes, he likes to hide behind the curtain of, like, you just hate yourself so much that you would say that to yourself. Mm. And so now we no longer trust ourselves or even like ourselves because we're like, we're like how could i say such awful things to myself like we don't even realize that there's a completely different thing operating behind that oh, like yeah. that is not you and curtain. that's not god yes. that is literally the devil that's demons those are evil spirits that are putting those thoughts in your head do not identify with yeah. that don't say uh, wow i must really hate myself mm. <laughs> no yes. it's the enemy or i'm the problem you're like, not it, it's me uh, it's just me because i just have to accept this about myself no. yeah and i'm just i'm just like extra hateful like i'm just actually the worst like i'm just too far or gone I'm just anxious yeah you know just an was, anxious person right i'm yeah. just i just have social anxiety i've gotten that comment sometimes um lately 
in my comment section when I'm live or whatever on my content where people are like, I want to go to church. And I'm like, go. And they're like, I don't want to go alone. And I'm like, I went alone. Like, yeah. go alone. And they're like, well, I have social anxiety. And I said, stop identifying that in the name of Jesus Christ right now. We bind that up and send it back to the pits of hell to where it belongs. Never come back. You do not have social anxiety in the mighty name of Christ. No, you don't. You're going to go to church and you're going to make a community and you're going to in, you're going to meet incredible people who only want to yes, love on you, by the you. way. Like, going to church is like, should be, should be the safest place you could yeah. go anywhere alone. Like, what do you mean? Like, you should be going into church and feel so loved on by these people and that lie that you're literally putting on yourself, I have social anxiety, I can't talk to people. Well, you are never going to find a community then. Like, you need to be in community, go to church, do it alone. And you're not alone, by the way. You have Jesus with you. Yeah. You, you're never alone. I want, yeah, I wanted to say real quick because one of the biggest things that I really battled with was I was a self-blamer and just feelings of unworthiness, mm. especially after what I went through last year. I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. I had no idea. I had no identity, truly. And mm. when I began my friendship with Angela that was one of the biggest blessings from you that you had taught me because the the thoughts wouldn't stop yeah. all day I felt like I had mm -hmm. like I it was mm -hmm. awful mm -hmm. all day just screaming voices in my head mm -hmm. and at that time what did you did you just think it was you yeah because you, know, you don't you didn't know really what it was right you just know that you're hearing all these awful things in your head so what course, did you think of course i thought it was me i yeah. believed every single every single thought yeah every single thought yeah. i that's why i lived in such darkness mm -hmm. i didn't know anything about the enemy yeah. i didn't know how to take thoughts captive mm -hmm. and i would start talking to angela i would say these thoughts are running mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. and she goes <laughs> i'll never forget you start laughing you go Oh, I know what to do. She goes, you laugh at that thought. When you hear those thoughts, you laugh, laugh at in them. his face. And this was before also I learned how to speak scripture, declare it over you. Mm -hmm. Sp speaking scripture is oh, huge because that is literally like acid. Like I just see like him like literally being like the enemy I'm talking about. Yeah. Like literally burning well, when we six. speak. Yeah. Yeah. It's the sword of the spirit. It's you the only offensive weapon against the attack. Mm -hmm. exactly. Only offensive. It doesn't even say it's, it's one of it's scripture. It's that sword. Only. When you started speaking the sword, here's what's crazy. When you start speaking the sword, it goes away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What so, on earth? I mm. used to have such bad intrusive thoughts, like to the point where mm -hmm. I couldn't even I couldn't be on a fourth floor balcony because I thought that I would fall off like crazy things. The enemy was attacking me in such an incredible, hilarious way because he's such a loser. He made me so scared of everything. Wow. Like, if you would have known me, then you wouldn't have recognized me. I like I'm legitimately fearless. I only fear the Lord and I'm not even kidding. Now I literally only fear Jesus. I was such a shell of myself. I That's was real. riddled by anxiety, no confidence, no boldness. I'd enter a room basically apologizing that I walked That you in. exist. Yeah. yeah. That's just yeah. what my presence was. It was apologizing wow. for even existing. And I was so scared of everything. And I would have intrusive thoughts that I was going to get hurt or someone thing was going to happen. It was just over. Living it was in just, fear. That is, pr it, like, that's in prison. Like, you were literally a slave. It, uh, truly. And nothing had ever <laughs> changed the course of my life than when I discovered 2 Corinthians 10.5. I demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and I take every thought in my mind captive and I make it obedient to Christ over and over and over again. I'm That was the first we scripture said, I ever memorized. That was the first thing I ever put my hands on her head and I said we are taking these thoughts captive because you are not subject to your thoughts. You are to, you are to govern your thoughts. You are thoughts are at your mercy and subject to you. That is the first thing that really happened in my relationship with Jesus was that I was like, this thing bows down to the name of Jesus. Let's like go. Everything. Come on. Let's go. The Do you know the freedom you have <laughs> when you can, when those thoughts come in and instead of being in a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. You authority. like you you just you you laugh like, at them. Wait a minute. You don't believe them anymore. Do you understand what that's going to, going to do to your life? That changes your Everything. life. Yeah. 
what's really important, I mean, and we pre all four of us preach this, is reading the word, is like when you know what Jesus, what God says about you in the Bible, that like every lie that you believe in your head can be actively combated by the word of God. There is a truth to expose every lie that you believe. And so you have to read the Bible because then you will no longer, when these thoughts mm -hmm. come up in your head, you know that God is for you. And so if there's a thought in your mind that is against you, that's not from God. Mm -hmm. So why would we believe that? Right. You know it's what like I mean? It's like having the receipts, you know, like how everyone's like, well, where are the receipts? Like the receipts are the Bible. Like, yes. so it's like we can try to stand up in confidence and be like, oh, no, no, I am worthy. Where are the receipts? Okay. Bible. That's yeah. that's bringing yeah. scripture into all of it, like into your prayers, into rebuking all of it. Receipts. The enemy mm -hmm. will be like, okay, yeah, that's really cute, but okay, word of God. Like yeah. he can't deny yeah. that. No one can deny the word of God. I'll never forget. I have the funniest story. You remember this. Because before we started the podcast, I was like making videos on TikTok talking about Jesus. And I'll never forget Easter <laughs> of last year, literally last year, it was right before the podcast, I had already been making videos for a little while and I just felt the Holy Spirit prompt me to like lead people to salvation through TikTok. And it was so weird to like do, you know, lead people in prayer to accept Jesus. But I was like, okay. So I, That's I make so the, cool. I make this video on, I, on Easter and then I'm like editing it together on TikTok and I'm about to post it. And I had gotten to a point now where I'm so in control of my thoughts to the point where like I can still think bad thoughts but it's like they pass through and they go away it, it's not a part of me I don't need to listen to it I can literally just let it go and so I'm having these thoughts and I'm actually not even realizing that I'm thinking these things we had gone to dinner the night before at this place called I think oh, Toka Madeira and I'm sitting there and I'm editing this video and I'm under attack <laughs> and I don't even realize do you know what's going through my head Isn't that funny when we don't even Wait, realize I don't even, in my head I'm thinking myself I'm thinking you are so ugly last I'm editing this video I'm going no, you're you're so ugly everyone was laughing at you last night at dinner because you're so ugly and everyone thinks you're so ugly mm. I literally go what the heck <laughs> I literally I'm so unaffected by the enemy sometimes that I'm like dude go, get out of here the heck? no literally <laughs> I have a voice in my head and I, yeah. I just my heart hurts for the people who would yeah. hear those things yeah. and be like oh, I am that's real I am ugly and everybody was laughing at me last night and then like, you become that shell of a human that already you just like yeah. you it's almost like you just it, you get attacked you get hit yeah. it's like you're literally you're, you're walking on, on eggshells you're on a battlefield you get hit once you get hit again now you're literally on the ground just getting literally demolished yeah and I, I think we have to take it seriously when it says that he, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. looking for someone to devour. And yet we're like, oh, you give the devil too much credit. You talk about the devil too much. Um, he's literally trying to devour me. Right. Why would I not? Why are like, we not going to acknowledge the that? lion we that's say, trying to kill us? Like, I'm sorry, I need to pay attention. We're not going to turn stand the other firm. cheek. We are not to be afraid, but we are to stand mm. firm in our authority. I actually also want to ask you guys what you do. Like how, I think there's probably a girl listening, mm -hmm. even myself, I wanna hear from you guys, what you guys would do with this. Say there's like so many lies and you're like, you're feeling like that, that oppression. How do you demolish it mm -hmm. through the word of God? Like how do you do it? Because there are some times when you can try to pray it away. What if you're just tired, you don't have the words? What if you don't know the scripture? Like what do you yeah. guys do? I think when you, you are in a situation where you no longer have, have the ability to fight for yourself the first thing you do is you call somebody else to fight for you and mm -hmm. i've been in that situation um where i don't have the words to pray i don't because when you're the hardest time to pray is when you need it the most it's in times of distress where it's almost as if god because it's like so easy to praise him when things are good it's your immediate reaction to be like thank you jesus hallelujah but when things are bad it's oftentimes you can be so consumed by whatever's happening you've got to have somebody to pick up and call it's to so fight good. for you that's that so actually good reminds. and there are some battles you can try to do on your own but sometimes oh, you're like in so much spiritual warfare that you're like i need i can't there, yeah. there was a moment that i had a couple weeks ago actually and i truly like couldn't even see straight i was having such bad spiritual warfare and you remember yeah and i yeah so that's that's a really great point that you said that and you started praying for me yeah and it just was like lifted all yeah. off so yeah, i will never forget i was in the bristol was farms parking lot screaming I was, no, because, because <laughs> she you was know puking that sometimes, double. Sometimes, <laughs> it's almost as if sometimes when you're going through a bad time, 
this isn't for everyone, but some people might experience you actually don't want to talk to God. Because like there are moments where like when things are bad, it can harden your heart. And that's such a scary place to be in because that's when you need him the most. And so I remember I asked you like if I could pray for you. And you're like, you know what? Not right now. Do you actually know what wow. I do? you want me to be really vulnerable right now? Absolutely. Do you want to know what I did when she started praying for me? I had the phone. I don't know what I would. This was the honestly one of the weirdest days. This is why, like, you have to be so careful. I'm on the phone. She goes, let me pray for you. I go, I don't want to do, I don't want to right now. She starts praying. You know what I do at Walgreens? I go like that. I put the phone down. <gasps> yeah. yeah. I yeah. put the phone down. You I, were like, I don't I hear want her this. screaming through the phone. Yeah. Yeah. And then later on that night, you put your hands on me and we started praying again. Oh, and then we went to the worship. Yeah. And that changed Because, that changed because you're right. Like, sometimes you're so on the ground, defeated, shot at, like, you're like, you're, you have I'm you don't want to go to God like yeah. you're exhausted you yeah. just got freaking demolished by the devil you've right. literally been on the ground shot at you don't want to go to God yeah you need your friend a war yeah. right war for you yes I think it's also you also have to remember that when you spend enough time with Jesus though we talked earlier about like being in the secret place spending that intimate quiet yes. time with Jesus where nobody else is there nobody knows about it and like being so close to Jesus, like you, we know that the Holy Spirit makes is an intercessor. He makes intercession mm. on our behalf. He will pray our prayers, the groanings of our heart. He'll pray them to God mm. when we don't have the words to speak, when we don't know how to pray as we ought. And so there are those moments where literally all you have to do, that tear is a prayer. Just saying, Jesus, <laughs> there are times where I am, where I'm fasting and I'll be like, God, my, my, I'm getting weaker and my prayers are getting shorter, but just here in my heart. So that's all you he just Jesus it. hear my heart. Yeah. Sometimes hear my like, heart. That's yeah. And sometimes he like knows so much more than you even know in that moment. Like it's like those moments where you don't know what to pray, you don't know what to say, you don't even really know what you're feeling. You're like, I don't even know what the heck is going on right now, God, mm. but I know something's off. Like help yeah. me. Like he knows exactly what to do in that in, in that moment. You know. Yeah. You know, I always say that I, everyone says like, how do you pray? When I feel him the most is when I'm at my weakest, when I can't even barely pray. Yeah. And I talk to him like he's my good father. Yeah. That's just sitting there listening, and yeah. that's all you need to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. You go to him so raw, so vulnerable, and just be you. I love that you say that. When you don't know what to do because you just feel so depleted, you just say, Jesus. Just I say need one word. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. I need you. That's all you have to do. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all so you have real. to do. And That's he may beautiful. not take it away, but he's walking with you through it. But he's going to comfort you through it. He's yeah, walking he you will. through it. And I yeah. know when he doesn't take the pain away, I know it's because... There's a reason for it. Yeah. But I know that he, I don't get scared anymore. Mm -hmm. I have a knowing and a peace mm -hmm. when I am in pain mm -hmm. that I have a father that's walking with me through it. Right. Yeah. You know, he's that light in my darkness and everything will be okay. And that's the difference between when you don't have God and when you do have God. When you don't have God, you're just in this panic mode and, you're, and you're, your life is just falling apart. And oh. when you do have him, because we're all going to go through storms, we're all going to go through these seasons of just hard chips but you know you have a father that is right there with you absolutely walking with you through it yes That's so good Ari I love that so much yeah wow. so we talked a lot about Ari like your story and how you started with the Lord mm -hmm. but I would love to hear even just a little bit whatever your testimony yeah. too <laughs> so I want to hear it you. how did you because the way that you were so bold in your faith you know, meeting Ari was so strategic from the Lord too. Like you were really obviously rooted in him before to be yeah. able to lead her and help her. So how did you find Jesus? I need to hear that story. Yeah. They need to hear that story. Mm. You're the best host ever. You're so cute. Um, so I, I basically, I grew up with parents who I didn't grow up in the church I went to I was Catholic growing up and so I went to Catholic school my whole life I went to Catholic church every mass every single weekend I never I didn't know anything in the Bible I truthfully didn't even know John three sixteen. like I couldn't recite one wow. thing to you I had no idea my mom loves Jesus so much and I grew up with a mom and that's probably why I am the way that I am that Jesus is like so tangible in his mm -hmm. presence is because my mom would just be moved to, to, to tears like she she would, it would start praying and she would instantly be moved to tears. I just saw a woman who was so boldly in love with God and who just, she knew that Jesus was her savior. She didn't know anything in the Bible either, but she had such a, which is so 
cool i think like <laughs> she had because now i'm like how do you even know jesus if you don't know the bible because it's they go hand in hand it's for hard. me that is jesus yeah yeah and so but my mom had such a she had such a deep spiritual understanding that she had a savior who died for her and that he was just a call away mm -hmm. and so i grew up with a mom who prayed for me my whole life um, my dad is not religious at all he was actually muslim converted to catholicism to marry my mom but not religious in in any way and so I grew up going to church, but my I loved Jesus so much, but my love for him didn't affect the way that I lived my life at all. I was the warmest of the lukewarm. Mm -hmm. I sometimes, recently I've been thinking like, I've always called myself a Christian, but to be a Christian means that you're a follower of Jesus. And there wasn't a single part of my life that followed Jesus. Wow. So I don't even know if I was a Christian, if I'm being honest, because I was a good person. Like I was good. I had good intentions. I love people. I was just how I am now. But in terms of sin, mm. pff, bye. You know what I mean? Like, so when I got into high school, I started drinking i started partying i started getting involved with boys and just doing things that were not great for my life i jesus really took a back seat in my life i i pretty much i still loved him i'd still go to bat for him and totally. like I, I was on the debate team for jesus like i'd fight everyone i didn't even know what i was saying but i would fight it's for him so you know sweet. I loved, that just shows that your soul was like you know yeah, like God, he, 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 he knew. already like yeah. created you to be this yeah. way yeah. yeah even if you weren't living it out like you were still just like so bold for him yeah like, you, like wanted to tell everyone about him yeah, yeah i just didn't know i didn't know what the bible said so when someone tells you hey you shouldn't do x y and z that's just like random people saying things to me. I don't know that for myself. I haven't experienced it. Mm -hmm. I haven't received that touch from Jesus. So long story short, I get into college and I, I moved to LA when I'm 18. I get into college, ex start experiencing horrific panic attacks. I start struggling with my mental health for the first time in my whole life. Imagine the fearless person that I am today. That's who I was my whole life until I became probably like 19 years old. I started to receive such an insane attack on my mental health, such bad anxiety intrusive thoughts i developed ocd which was what i was diagnosed with a few years ago i started to self-medicate with alcohol wow. and so i got into this perpetuating like vicious toxic violent cycle of self-medicating with alcohol to feel better from the anxiety I'm left just wild because it makes you more anxious. Like I did that too with alcohol, and it only made wow. me more anxious. Nothing yeah. makes you more anxious than drugs and alcohol. Bro. Alcohol was it makes you it fixes it for literally twenty minutes, and then as soon as that high is gone, you need more. Otherwise, you're in a much worse position. Than and you're left with in. more anxiety, like oh. anxiety, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm the worst person. I said all the worst things last night. It's awful. Anxiety was pff, you don't even. Know I identified how bad. in that every weekend. Oh, I that identified was me. in that. No, a hundred percent. So then when I this went on for a few years I essentially got sober when I was 23 years old it was a Thanksgiving I didn't know that I had a spiritual experience with Jesus but I always mark this as the day that I got saved technically mm -hmm. just because God's hand was so on my life and it's as if my spirit came into agreement with his and we decided together we are done with this it was a supernatural deliverance that he did on my behalf I didn't ask him to and nobody actually no that's not true no, somebody did so just the way we talk about how Ari was spoon-fed the Bible God sent me an angel his name is Socrates he's a pastor in Florida and he became a really close family friend of my family. And this man saw in me what I never saw in myself. He, oh, pro wow. he prophesied over me the first day he met me that I was going to teach millions about Jesus. And I'm that part is I'm, crazy I'm, to I'm, me. Here you are you're like, like, what? Huh? Dude, yeah. I'm literally probably tipsy on the phone with him. Right now. <laughs> you're like, like, yeah, you're okay. like had, yeah, you had a couple okay, mimosas cool. at brunch. And you're <laughs> like, oh. I'm not Wait, that lie. is so wild how he spoke that over your life. Yeah. He saw the call. He saw it of God on your life while you were still living in it. He yeah. did. Wow. But that's what Jesus has always done for me and that's why wow. I love him so much that even when I'm in the middle of sin, he still is looking to the future version of myself who will eventually obey him and that's why he doesn't condemn. He's not judging me off the person I am. He's looking at who I'm going to become through him and his grace. That's so good. And so I'm like like okay socrates yeah me ministry like it's just yeah. that so you would have never been able to convince me of that a day in my life 
and then so but I started to open up to Socrates the anxiety is bad he's he's praying for me every day he's teaching me the Bible I'm mm-hmm. still not picking it up myself but I do realize I do learn about authority and I learn about boldness and I do learn about the enemy and I learn about spiritual mm-hmm. warfare and that's why we get a little bit upset when people shy away from it because that's what saved my life yeah. is learning that I do have an em- enemy that does roar around like a lion and so Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there and I start praying for myself and he teaches me how to pray and God didn't fix it instantly but a few months later after I start this relationship with Socrates where he's praying for me I quit drinking on a Thanksgiving I just give it up one day I put it down and I don't pick it back up the next few months of my life are horrific I was in fight or flight I was truly just I was on autopilot in, in survival mode and I'm sitting, God is... He's, when is this? What year is this? This is 2019. Okay. Oh, so 2019 Thanksgiving is when I stopped drinking. And okay. was it like you heard from God and you said, put it down? No. Like, what was it? I because a know. lot of people are in addiction and they just get back and they quit yeah. and then they get back and then they quit. And then they, it's How like, do you cut it? The fact that you literally stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because the addiction was pretty bad for about, so I had been drinking for a a couple of years with the whole self-medicating thing. Like I knew my reason for drinking was not good. It was not like everybody else. And then the last six months of my drinking were so bad to where I was no longer really functioning as a normal person in society. I was in the house all day long, simply medicating. And God had sent me a person. It's my ex-boyfriend. His name is Jake. He is still a really good friend of mine. Really, really wonderful person. He basically, he was the only person in my life because I hid it so well. And that's why you are truly as sick as your secrets. Not a single person wow. knew except this, except Jake because he was the closest person to me. And so he basically came, it came to a head where he was like, he loved me so much. And he came to me with tears in his eyes and he said, I'm done. If you don't stop drinking, I don't want to be with you. And that was, it was like the perfect mixture of God's spirit um, Mm. empowering me and also enough like self-loathing and like reflection of being like the one person in the world who loves me so much doesn't want to be with me. It's over. Like it's done. I don't know how it was. It was supernatural. I can't explain it. Yeah. I put it down, not even understanding that it would be the last time, hoping, thinking, maybe. And even the following months, I was like, I don't know if this is going to stick because I'm really anxious and I'm not feeling good. You guys, for about a year, you guys know how I am. I didn't laugh. There wasn't a humorous bone in my body Mm. for about six months. I was simply surviving. My body was trying to repair itself. To go from drinking to having absolutely no vice, it was traumatic on my body. It was really scary. Wow. But that pain was so necessary for me to, first of all, learn my lesson and be like, I'm never going back there again because that was really, that hurt a lot. Yeah. And so anyways, wow, Ange. Yeah, God starts he starts pressing in on me. I start listening to worship music. Um I have Socrates praying for me every single day. I start to pray for myself. That's really what changed. If you look at my journal during that time, it went from like manifestation. I'd be like, mm. I am this. I want a million dollars. I this whatever. I am worthy. Yeah. I am great. And then it started to go to Dear Jesus, uh-huh. thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Lord. And there was a yeah. moment. That's in, so good. I know. And like Brother probably, shift. I think about like a year into yeah. being sober, I had written in my in my journal, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that he died for my sins. I give my life to you. So maybe that's when I got saved because I don't even know where I heard that. I didn't read the Bible yet. But my spirit was speaking these things that Jesus is Lord. And like, mm. again, I didn't have community. These were all things that the Holy Spirit was working in me. I would, don't even know where I heard this stuff. Wow. It was him. It was just it was totally The him. secret place too. Yeah. You were getting in the secret place. Yeah. yeah. And so basically... I then, I picked up a Bible one day. I went to a Christian, I went to Mosaic. I went to a Christian church, which yeah. was very different from Catholic church. I saw John's scripture on the, sp- on the screen and I was like, I like that, whatever that is. It's telling the story of a guy I've loved my whole life, but I don't know that story and I want to know what that says. I opened John. I saw the book of John come to life before my eyes. My spirit was awakened my eyes were open it was done me jesus <laughs> forever forever wow and and that was what year 
that was 2021 so I got so or the end of 2020 I believe is when that happened or 2021 is when I first started yeah 2021 because that's when I moved into my Hollywood house again or for the first time and since that day it's been a it's been a process though it hasn't I did not throw everything away right away Mm -hmm. It, it wasn't truly until I found community until I started the podcast that God had like we said earlier where where God oftentimes makes you a leader before you're even ready because it forces you to step into that position because up until then I loved Jesus so much but I didn't have any responsibility and the truth is that I ministered I was ministering to so many people in my life I was the backbone of so many people's faith in my life Mm. but I was always the holiest person in that room yeah and so there was I love you shared that part of your testimony before and I love the way you said that where you were like I'm the best Christian I know I'm the best Christian I know so I'm doing really well right right but that's real like when it's just you especially in a culture like LA yeah yeah. Are you kidding me? I was a fr- I was a unicorn in LA. I was <laughs> Oh yeah, I, sister. <laughs> like I you know, but then I was I was really hit with the most beautiful full thing of my life was when I started to experience conviction for the first time. Mm. Um where I was like Isn't that crazy conviction? Like yeah. oh, so I'm sitting there wild. being like, dude, I've been doing this my whole life. Why why I've never why, felt this before. Why is God Whoa. taking this piece away from me? No, 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 it's no, crazy. no. I can't stop this. I can't what am I who am I without this? I can't not do this. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's been a even good with time. the alcohol, so it's real. like one day you're like, well, I I can't do this anymore. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I mean, I was fully the type of person, even a couple months, few months into my journey with the Lord, where I like legitimately had a bottle of wine in my home all the time. Like I yeah. was like, what do you mean wine with my dinner? Like that's normal. Like every day, <laughs> you know, every and day having a glass for yeah. real. Because I was like, wait a minute, it's casual, it's cute, it's in my home. And my everyone home, does it's wine. It. Also, everyone like I feel it. like I justified wine a yeah. lot. Like yeah. I was like, it's not like I'm slinging back tequila shots yeah, yeah, in my yeah, house because yeah. that would be concerning, yeah. right? But not the bottles of wine that need to be restocked in your home you know like I mean I would go through like multiple bottles a week and so it was I was definitely getting to the place I don't know if I was becoming addicted but I was like I I was like reliant like I relied on wine to for like every emotion it was well celebration I was like oh my gosh I got through today wine oh my gosh I'm so freaking anxious it was the hardest day of my life wine yeah um I'm sad I'm bored. Like, it was literally, like, yeah. I mean, I went to wine for all those feelings. Right. And it was funny because, like, even when I, I go live on TikTok a lot, apparently I keep bringing it up, but I was, like, I would go live on TikTok and my followers would be, like, where's the wine? Like, we're having wine in the... And it was, like, just, like, such a yeah. part of my brand, even in the beginning of my journey. So when you, like, when we say the grace that the Lord has for us, it's crazy because I'm standing here being like, I love Jesus, and I'm on live drinking my red wine. It's wow. awful. It's so wow. awful. But no, it's real. It's so real. And I think it's crazy because for me, it really was like a switch where I was just like, I just didn't want it anymore. I was yeah. like, I just I just felt the conviction and I was like, wait, this is like, I can't do this. I cannot continue to just have wine like casually in my home. I don't even really like want alcohol at all anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because it's like a person that I was a year ago could have never imagined that I'd be saying that now like what do you mean I love wine like it was like a part of my identity in a weird way where it was like I love wine and I love pizza and Mm -hmm. that's just my life you know so anyway yeah conviction's real and it is so real too that the Lord can actually change your freaking palate like he can change the things that you crave the things you desire like that is real he's that powerful and it's just wild because it's like even you like look at you you literally were like I need alcohol to live And God was like, no, you don't. Yeah, no. I mean, the whole situation with alcohol, like God truly, there are some things where he just changes your appetite and he will give you conviction. Mm. But then there's also moments where he's like, I actually have to save your life right now because there is something severely wrong. And it was, and it was really scary. And honestly, this is sometimes part of my testimony that I skip over. You inspired me so much Mm. in when you were on our episode 20 minutes ago (laughs) that like you and you you said the raw stuff and sometimes you skip over that my situation was really bad I would have died there were moments first of all I wanted to die and there were moments where I was like I'm going to die this is going to be the end of me I had reached the point where the sin was no longer fun the sin had literally lead to led to death and I was on my way there and God had to step in supernaturally Mm. to free me from that and so it's almost still maybe one day I'll have an understanding of how that worked exactly. But all I can say was it was supernatural. God intervened and he saved me when I didn't deserve it. And that's what he's always done for me. Yeah. He's always shown me favor when I didn't deserve it. Wow. Even with our podcast that has had so much favor on it. And we're mm. so 
unbelievably grateful to the point where we look at each other all day. These are two girls who, who like, we wouldn't have, we didn't even ask for it. I mean, it was to the point where when we started the podcast, I was literally being like, I still don't want this. I still don't want to be in ministry. I still, mm. I just want to talk about Jesus because I love him, but I still don't want to change. And he still was like, I'm going to give you grace because I know who you're going to be in the future. Right, right. You know what I mean? And so that's what he's always done. So in that moment, I did not deserve his forgiveness and mm -hmm. his, I had not repented from the things I had done, but he knew I would in the future. And so he gave me like, he, he f flash forwarded the, the grace and, you know, and the saving that he gave me. So wow. I'm really, uh, that's why we love him so much. He's so good. I'm so proud of you for sharing that. Yeah. Because I just think a lot of people don't talk about addiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a real stronghold. It is. Especially in the next gen. Like, yeah. In the youth, like, man, there's yeah. so many things to be addicted to. And we don't talk about it enough. No, we right? don't talk about it enough. And uh, especially, like, for mm. women, I feel like it's different when a man gets sober. Like, it's, like, heroic when a man gets sober. It's attractive. It's cool. It's noble. Like, he's so strong. If a woman struggles with stuff like this it's almost like it's a it should be a man's problem but it's like when women struggle with it it's like she's damaged goods like that's weird like you're not wow. supposed to struggle with that it's so good, like you don't hear yeah. women talking about that but like mommy wine culture is such a thing mm -hmm. where like there are literal moms who sit there and they numb themselves every single night because they think like they've had such a hard day with the kids that they then numb themselves from even having to like deal with their kids like this is a whole thing that's on the internet and it's it's really like this is a female problem as much as it is yeah. a male problem and it's wine like i'm telling y'all it's like there's that yeah. justification that comes with drinking wine where you're like this isn't even the hard stuff like it's yeah. not even i could be going way harder really. than this i could be <laughs> sipping whiskey i could be yeah. doing whatever like wow. bourbon and, and you're it's like it's substance. just wine it's still a substance yeah. you're still drunk and you're still hung over yeah, so no. yeah and the xanax you know, yeah you're having a hard night you need to sleep i'll just pop a xanax it's and we so got the vaping yes the vaping i mean we go out i don't see one person without one now especially here yeah and it's that's everywhere. a that's everywhere. a big one. The and vaping. it's starting so young too, like are especially with the vaping. It's like middle adults. schoolers. People are in middle school, yeah, vaping. vaping. It's really, really pray for the kids. It's, it's so not scary. But if you're under the sound of our voice, mm. yeah, and you're struggling with that, like you're not alone. You can be freed by you're it. You're not alone. You can and be Jesus, freed from it. He wants to meet you there. Like yeah. it's not just like something that you know we don't talk about in the church. We need to talk about it more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you if you're struggling too, and, and you want to be freed from these things, but you don't even know where to start. I would encourage you to simply invite God into the situation. Jesus, I invite yes. you into the situation yes. with the vaping or the alcohol or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And like, I might not have the strength right now in this very moment, but I will through you. So just start to work. And he who complete, who started a good work in you will bring it to completion. All you have to do is invite him to start it and he will complete it. Wow. He did with me. I simply invited him and it took months for yeah. him to complete it. Wow. And he did on his timing when he was ready when i was ready and when the time was right and he'll do I the, love that he'll do the same thing with you too because i know a lot of people vape because they don't feel good yeah like they they it's like a social thing like mm -hmm. they're they're uncomfortable so same they suck on it's, it's anxiety, anxiety. Yeah. and god will do the work in you he will put a boldness and confidence in you if you just allow him to yes seek him build an intimate relationship with him yes you have no idea the transformation he will do in your life immediately oh, immediately he like immediately comes there is no like Hey, Jesus, come. I need you. And he's like, all right, give me 20 minutes. All right, well, I'm dealing with all this other stuff, so can you just hang on for, like, another hour? It literally says in the Bible, and immediately yeah. he comes. Yeah. Like, when Peter was drowning, when he looked away from Jesus and he was drowning, it said immediately yeah. Yeah. Jesus came and took him out of the water. Like, that's who he is. Yeah. So the minute you call his name, that's all he needs. He just needs an invitation. He just needs you to allow him and say, come. He's already there. Yeah. He's yeah. immediately there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also like it's something that we've really noticed in our walk is like, yes, he will bring it to completion. But you also have to meet Jesus and you have to take responsibility for your faith. Yeah. Yeah. And like I think about how I spent years reading the Bible, knowing the truth of God's word and still actively rejecting it. And, and I've like tried to justify it so many times in my head. Like, well, I just the the enemy was attacking me and blinding me and scales were on my eyes. And it's Come like, on. no, I literally didn't care. And I was like, wow. 
I, I, I just, I simply didn't care. And I had to take responsibility and be like, this is what I'm reading. This is the truth. If everything else is the truth, if all of God's promises have come to pass in my life and everything has been true thus far, but I'm picking these little things mm. and deciding that they're not true because it's going to be really hard to get rid of them. Who am I kidding? What am mm. I? I am truly, yes, I'm hurting God, but I'm, it's me that I'm hurting. Yes. I'm doing myself a disservice. Mm. And it's when you step out in faith to be like, you know what? This is what God says about it. And I'm just going to try. Just even try. Mm. Just s- s- stepping out in faith and trying. And then all of a sudden, you'll the f- it'll meet you afterwards. The conviction mm. meets you afterwards to be like, oh my gosh, he was right all along. And it's actually not even as hard as I thought it would be. That's what happened with the alcohol. I came into agreement. We talked about surrender. I literally yes. just surrendered. And I was like, you say this is bad i'm gonna believe you and then it came the the revelation came afterwards of being wow. like oh he was right the whole time yeah. Yeah. You, but you know but first you came surrender came out of agreement and i think that's how the stronghold can be broken yeah yeah is you have to come out of agreement stop with the lies with it and the issue is i think a lot of people are still struggling with it because they haven't mm-hmm. fully come out of agreement with the lie that they need it yeah. to, you know, I need it. Well, I need it. Well, if I don't have it, this is going to happen. Well, I'm going to have this side it's effect. So and true, like, right? Or I'm, I'm going to not be a good person. I'm not going to be likable. I'm not going right. to be happy. I'm right. not going to be at peace. It's like, break that off. The moment you come out of agreement with that is when the deliverance comes. Yes. But if you do not come out of agreement with the lie and God come into agreement with truth, yeah. you're still in that, you're still in bondage yeah. to the enemy. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I was going through. I simply couldn't let go of, you know, my sin because I didn't think I could. I was just like, I, I don't I don't think I can. Like how how am I gonna let yeah, go? Yeah, you're like, of what do you mean? I am stuck here. Something that I I have been attached to my whole life. I'm gonna just you know, but when I did, it's not even hard anymore. And now I realized that's where my lack of peace was coming from. That's where my depression was coming from. Mm -hmm. That's where my anxiety Mm -hmm. was coming from. I was separated from God. I was sinning. I wasn't doing the right thing. And I look back and I say... I couldn't imagine ever living that way again. Wow, yeah. yeah. How it's is so I real. living like that? I know. And I it, think back on versions of myself and I'm like, how did I survive truly. that? Truly. Yeah, and although I have moments where, you know, it might be a little hard, it feels so foreign to me the way I used to live. And yeah. it is so effortless now. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's just, it's just you think you can't do it. And then when you actually take a leap of faith, God meets you right there and he, he takes those desires yeah. out. There's an empowerment that comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a force, not just a force, because the Holy Spirit is a person that you should have an intimate Mm. relationship with. And like you can be in constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit all day long. You talk to the Holy Spirit, invite Mm. him. He comes like it's like a dance. It's the most beautiful thing. It's like a dance. It's so beautiful. But the Holy Spirit, there's this empowerment (laughs) that comes in scripture says that you will not be tempted beyond what you can bear, but God will provide a way of escape for you. So like all these things that you feel like you can't live without, let me tell you with the empowerment from the Holy Spirit, you can. There are things that have broken off me that I, I, I literally marvel at the fact that I can live without them. And it's easy. Mm. Not everything. Mm. And everything comes. A sacrifice is supposed to hurt. Mm. And like we, I, sacrifice has been my word for the year, especially yeah. after fasting. And like fasting is such a sacrifice. I'm sacrificing my desire to eat and to feed my flesh and to feed my body. And so I'm sitting here and sacrifice. I realize, especially when I've done like longer fast and absolute fast with no water and it hurts so badly there was a moment where i was like it's supposed to hurt sacrifice is supposed to hurt jesus really hurt when he died on the cross that was the ultimate sacrifice and it hurt him he felt every single bit of pain just because he's god he's also human he was not exempt from that pain just like we're not exempt from pain and so if his sacrifice hurt ours is supposed to hurt as well so when you're giving things up it does hurt you don't know the pain that i felt for at least six months constant all day when i stopped drinking was unbelievable my anxiety was a million times worse i was i fully had started disassociating from my brain from my body because my body was my brain was trying to protect itself because i was in such a heightened state of anxiety it was really scary and it hurt but look what the end result was you know what I yeah, mean? The it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, you would not be here nope. if you had not come out of agreement with yes. that lie. Yeah. Yeah. You would yeah. not be you would not be ministering to millions Absolutely just as, but God saw it and he led you and it's just 
such a gift and to that's see where it. confidence yeah. comes from you mm. want to you want to know how, how to be confident obey be obedient yes living right following the word of god when i started really living right and being obedient i i'm i am truly a different person yeah the, my confidence because I just live good mm. what I just I realized when I I didn't know because I didn't have the Bible but I was in constant shame and guilt because mm. I was living in sin yeah mm. it's just Ugh. so rewarding well when and I think that right that's way. that's what is so beautiful about following the Lord is that it and like being obedient and you know he's got all these rules and we can't sin and we can't do this and that but it's not rules because there's so much fruit that I comes so from bummed. it like yeah. there literally is so much goodness that comes from <laughs> be, like being obedient yeah. to the Lord. Like it's not just like, yes, sir. Yes, it's like, yeah. no, like your life is about to be so freaking awesome. So much Thank better. You, you have no idea. That. Like you're gonna have the most confidence you've ever had in your life. Confidence. You're gonna feel so clear. Like yeah, you're joy. like lit joy. Like you're gonna feel alive. We were talking about our spirit, like feeling dead before. It's like you, the fruit. Like that's why we believe in Him because He shows up. He gives us the receipts, and mm. we see the way that He moves in our life. I love it's it. It's the so reward. Lord. Thank it's a, it's you for reward. saying this because that's exactly was my mindset. Yes. I was like, I have to follow these rules for yeah. what? Yeah. What's it gonna do? Yeah. And and it. But it's, he's like he's like just wait. He's like just mm. just give me a couple months. Give me a couple weeks. Actually, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna see the fruit, and then you're like. Then you're like low key addicted to that. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait, actually, if I'm gonna be addicted to anything, I guess it's gonna be the Lord. Well, no. <laughs> because and it's so this, addictive when you see the fruit. So you said this last night because we were just in this incredible community. I could cry. Like, I mean, it was just like we were in heaven l- last and night. And we, we were, were running on zero Seriously. sleep. I we mean, were running on three hours. We were hitting 24 hours of being awake because we had flown in at the freaking crack of dawn. Yeah. And we were like, God, why is our tonight? not ending like why are we still going like we were invited to this thing after church and we were like but there's a reason that we're going right and what you said we literally were we're driving home at midnight and we're exhausted half alive so (laughs) but Allie's like Ashley I feel so alive Mm. yeah I I I don't even remember saying that to be honest she's like like, this is the best like this is the most fun high 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 it literally was giving high on the holy spirit jesus swear I don't even know what it feels like Huh? It, it wasn't was worship, even. It right? was worship. Yeah, like, it was worship. Even, but then we it was also friends. It was, it was just the it was people just like, we were yeah. around. This, this freedom, and I just believe God wants what we felt last night. God wants everyone to feel that like abundant joy explode. Like you're just like it this, is like, nothing else on earth. Nothing else on incredible. earth can make you feel like that other no. than and the Holy Spirit. No hangover no no there isn't can i tell you that i'm so glad that you just brought that up because i could be having the worst of worst days Mm -hmm. i could be getting attacked by the enemy by by the way when we had told that story when i put the phone down we had went to a worship night that night wow and the enemy just wanted to rip all of that i mean i was i mean i was delivered that night and i had never this is coming from a girl who didn't even know about the enemy a year ago i was i felt something coming off of me wow it was one of the most insane experiences i have ever had Mm -hmm. and you and and i just i love that you guys say that because if you can just go to a worship night, mm-hmm. it changes you. It really Worshiping. does. Even if you're dreading going low key, mm, which is yeah. like so silly because it's like, you know the fruit of yes. like coming out of moments like that because you've seen it and you've been like hyped, like amped up on the Holy Spirit, right? <laughs> and then you're like, why do I Why do I not want to go right now? Mm. You, you know, like when you when you were in that rut, I bet a feeling, you were like, I don't want to go to oh, worship I night. I almost did it. I yeah. almost did thank, it. thank God I have no shame. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> get on the ground. Oh, you need <laughs> yeah. that friend. That's <laughs> right. Say, go in. Yeah. But man, worship. But it does. So and then it turned it around for you. Like, yeah. I'm telling you. Praise for heaviness. Go to worship yes. nights. Worship in the Please car. Please be in the- community with other people. Like even simply just, sometimes it's not even the song i'll just look over and i'll see someone like literally beaming for the lord and i'm like okay i'm back (laughs) you know what i mean like just being around people who are so clearly in love with jesus you're like okay i love it here you know i love that and when you're feeling that heaviness it does say like um put on a garment of praise like like praise for like god wants us when we're feeling that heaviness just start praising him just start Mm, worshiping like literally right on the spot like everything you're saying jesus 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 hallelujah yourself like i'm telling you if you're in the car if you're if you're whatever you're listening to this, just start like if you're feeling that heaviness, it just feels like like one, start praising Jesus, just say worship, just put turn on 
up a room like li- just worship yeah. your heart out mm. then call your friend yes. yes okay but if you don't have that kingdom friend right now to pray over you just worship my girl yeah. because Truly. it's just gonna lift it's gonna lift it off yeah and mm. you'll feel it yeah in wow. church i mean just i just speak into people that are just coming to religion i when i didn't have anyone i just made it a point to go to church every single yeah. sunday and yeah. i went by myself i had no one to go with yeah i that's what changed my life. I went there every Sunday, and I had those people that, you know, the people that stand in the front, I had them praying on me every Sunday. Wow, and Ari. boy, did it change my life. You know what? I'm, I love... I love that you went to church alone because same. And I don't know if you're same. If you, because I we all go to church alone. We all did. For the, oh, for that's it. That is on purpose. We went to the purpose. same church. Yeah, too. yeah. But like, I really think that sometimes it doesn't even. I mean, it doesn't. In the beginning, at least, it doesn't really come from boldness. It comes from desperation. Yeah. Like you're like, actually, I need the Lord so much that I don't even care. I'm gonna go alone. Yeah, like I need same. church. I need Him. I didn't walk into church with confidence. I walked into into church being like. <laughs> hungry huh I know, i'm just scared. desperate and i want to yeah. live yeah. give me bread that's exactly <laughs> i just me. want to live like yeah. that's what i walked into church with you know but you know there was yeah. something so intimate mm, that i look back that was so special about going by myself mm. i felt such an intimacy with him just being alone like yeah I was I look back and I'm just so proud of myself mm-hmm. because it's it's not easy to go to church when you're yeah. so depressed and just to go alone mm-hmm. and and have the boldness to go up to those people and be like can you pray for me yeah. can you put your in front of everyone so um, yeah um, I would love to pray for any listeners who might it's so crazy how like specific this topic has been this is like crazy yeah. it's different than anything i've been able to bring to the podcast before so like praise jesus hallelujah that's incredible but i really would just love to pray over our listeners right now so if we can all just hold hands yeah and we're just gonna pray just pray for any healing um lord jesus i just thank you so much for this community right here god you have such a army of women in this room, God, and I'm so grateful for them, Jesus. Thank you for blessing me and everybody who's on the other side of this podcast with their presence, Jesus. Just thank you for being here, God. And we just want to uplift every single person who is listening, God. I pray that through my voice, they feel spoken to directly Mm -hmm. to them through you, God, Jesus. Mm -hmm. That you know every single one of them personally, God. You know every hair on their head, Jesus. That you hear them, you see them, you're right next to them right now, actually. Wherever they're, wherever, like to their right, actually, like whatever their right is, it could be in bed, it could be on the couch, it could be in the car, it could be in the grocery store, it could be on the sidewalk. Jesus, you're right there with them, God. And so I just pray that they feel that right now, Jesus. We pray for healing. We pray for whatever chains, whatever struggles they're going through, Jesus. Addiction, mental health was so heavily talked about in this episode, God, and we know that that was not an accident. That was on purpose. There are people who are truly dealing with that and they're struggling with it. Or maybe there are people in their families, there's friends, there's people they know who are struggling with it too, God. And so we just pray for those chains, God. We pray that you remove them in your mighty name, Jesus. They are are broken off right now in Jesus' name, God. They are breaking off as I'm continuing to speak right now, Jesus. Thank you so much, God, that we bind those, those demons and all of the negative thoughts that might be going through their head late at night jesus god we just bind it up and we send them back to the pits of hell where they do, where they belong god that they will never come back in jesus name jesus mm. god thank you so much god thank you so much for this moment thank you for this space god thank you for allowing to you just continuing to use my sisters here as, as just vessels for your kingdom jesus god we are so grateful for you so i pray that in your mighty name jesus in jesus, jesus name. name we pray Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. What a seal. seal. You. What a seal. Just at the same Beautiful. time. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love you guys. I love, I love you so much. Love Thank you, all us. of you, Ashley. <gasps> Thank you, Ari. Thank you, Ange, for being here. And I love you all so much. Night. I could sleep right now. And do I know you. that was and beautiful. Good night. Good night. All you do. We are mm. just so proud of you. Thank you are you. moving this next generation. You are yeah. doing something. You just been saved a year? Yeah, and look at that. you. Look at us. I am so proud of you. Thank you. I am so that proud of you. Gen. And we are so yeah. blessed to have yes. you as sisters. Yeah. We love you guys so much. We love Thank you, you hey. for using your platform for Jesus. Thank truly. you for using your platforms. And praise God that we can bring them all together. Are you kidding? Amen. Yeah. They're like literally freaking out. This is amazing that we're all <laughs> together right now. Yeah. So yes. uh, something that I like to say in the end is like, okay, guys, can we just do something really cool? Yeah. Can we all just like walk a little bit more like Jesus? today can we just show somebody 
why Jesus is so cool today. Let's give people more compassion, more love. Like just literally walk the earth with his light and his light only. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for coming in for another Friday. Happy Friday, by the way. Happy weekend. Let's have a great weekend. Let's have a great week with yes. the Lord. And we just love you guys so much. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks Bye for guys. having me. Thank Bye. you for having Christ will call you all nice. <laughs>